What's the word, man? It's Migo, man. My name is Kwame Tools. And we just jumped off the porch. The Dirty Glove Bass to go tune in. She mad I don't talk back. I do dress dressed up in all black. I like all these with the turbo, Brody Death, I call it. All right, so we got Karma Tools and Domingo jumping off the porch with us today. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, you know what the fuck going on, man. Straight from the loo. All the way over there. Welcome, guys. How y'all feeling yeah. first off, man? Turn. Shit, man, I'm feeling gravy, man. I'm all the way in ATL with it. We gravy out here. Yes, sir, man. Yeah, what else you guys got planned here in Atlanta, man? You guys came down to work, you recording, yeah. shooting videos. What, 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 what you got on tap, man? Yeah, we came down here to network for real, for real. Man, yeah. everything, goddamn, you know, all over. We doing everything, music, all of that. We just working. We make sure we work for real. Yeah. How do you like the vibes here in Atlanta? And does it compare at all to at home in St. Louis, or is it completely different? No, it's more chaotic down here. Like, it's more chaotic here? Yeah, we're like just more busy, yeah. you know. Man. And then the drive's way longer. Like in St. Louis, we all close to each other. Take 10 minutes to get to each side of the city. So it's more bigger. That's it. And for real, like everything out here, like more open. In Motion like, City. Yeah, it's like, like we got like, you know, like highways bigger. Everything just bigger here, for real. That's it. It's like everything, yeah. you at least 30 minutes an hour away, no matter where you at. Right, right. hell yeah. Police lights not even red, right. they just strictly blue, <laughs> just black. For real, like blue <laughs> and white, playing. bright as fuck, you see them coming. Yeah, it's like they want you to see them right, driving yeah. around. I get scared every time they I see that. They lights just be on. They don't even be on now, they just oh. be on. <laughs> real shit, man. All right, man, so let's talk about St. Louis, man. So guys, just kind of break down the culture. What's life like up there in St. Louis right now today? Uh, shit, I just feel like it's, I feel like it ain't typical, but it's more like, like the worst side. Like, it's not as, like I heard, like my driver, the driver outside, he talking about that. He heard it was like a nice place. I feel like it ain't, it ain't really like, you know what I'm saying? It's nowhere near nice to me, shit. Yeah. Shit, I love it though. It's the trenches, you know what I'm saying? From the trenches, so you gotta show love for it, for real. Yeah, because, you know, when people, like, at least for me, when I hear about St. Louis, it's yeah. always the murder rate. You know what yeah, I'm saying? It's, like, yeah. always at the top of the nation. Um, why do you everything. feel like that is? Like, why is there so much violence in your city? They try to cover everything but the good stuff that's happening in St. Louis. Yeah, like, shit. we real life got, everybody down there got motion, for real, for real. There's a couple people who out there who are half-assing, but, like, everybody really got motion. There's a lot of more entrepreneurs. And like they don't really try to cover like the good stuff of St. Louis. They always try to bring the negativity up. When we damn near like come, we like the next Atlanta for real, for real, how much emotion we got in St. Louis. Absolutely. All right, shit. We just we just I feel like we just ain't been given a chance for real. Like you know everybody had their stops everywhere, but like I feel like we the last stop. Like, there's no more beating around the bush. Like you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we here. So, you know, yeah, really like I mean, I feel like that we get slept on so much that everybody got that hunger now, like, mm -hmm. uh, we got to show, like, what St. Louis is. Everybody trying to put in, put in on their part. Real shit, man. Why do you feel like you guys are overlooked then? Like, what, what's missing that, you know, put that spotlight on, the, on St. Louis then? I, I feel like it's like crabs in a bucket. Mm -hmm. Like, everybody trying to get out, but don't want to see the next man win instead of just working together, helping each other move up. It's more like one person wanting more than everybody else. Yeah. When you can work as a team, build that shit up together and have the whole St. Louis turn, you know what I'm saying? Real and we missing professionalism. Like a lot yeah. of niggas be forgetting that like this rap shit and like being an entertainer, like doing anything with buzzing and getting rich off of it, you gotta know how to be able to turn off being a street nigga and turn off being a rap nigga. Like you, it's certain, it's a time and place for everything. And a lot of niggas mess up their business because they got stuck in living double lives and stuff like that. So I feel like a lot of people get held back because yeah. they don't take it seriously as they should have. I feel that. Do you feel like the artists are starting to come together more now than they were in the past or is yeah, it still pretty yeah. divided? I, I feel like now, yeah. Back then I feel like it was a little bit worse, but I feel like the newer generation kind of realized like, so let's just get this money, you know what I'm saying? Like, fuck the beef and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we just trying to get some paper We was real. all young watching like, this yeah, shit happening. Like, <laughs> and then we growing up seeing like, seeing hood legends get killed. Right, so. And we like, damn, like, shit, I'm like, I'm looking at it like, damn, I, this was one of the rap I was listening to in middle school. And then he was steady, like, you know, shit like that just happened. And then you see like how it turned out for him, we just be like, damn, if yeah. he would've kept it straight. 
that shit ain't worth it for real. Yeah. It's just shit. If it's about paper, it's worth it, but shit, that street shit, you know, it don't last long for real. You either dead or you in jail. Real shit. Do you feel like an artist needs to move outside the city then to make it big, or can they blow up in the city and live comfortably? They can blow, up in, the they can blow up in the city for sure. Yeah. I feel and like live comfortably too. That's your city, you know what I'm saying? I feel like anybody who thinks they need to move out to make a name, like, that, that ain't how I think about it. At least I feel like your city gonna be behind you first. You know what I'm saying? Some That's people just overgrow their city, though. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it'd be more opportunities in different places. So, like, it get placed in different, you know, they have to leave their city. It ain't even like, shit. Uh, I'm just gonna leave my city once I pop. It's that, like, the opportunities is different. Because people always, even people be in LA and say, I'm gonna go to Houston. Yeah. Just because it's like more business opportunities. That's just how it is. If it's a better opportunity, why would you hold yourself back? Real yeah, shit, though. No, nah, that's real. Um, so, Migo, kind of talk about, like, the Mexican culture in St. Louis, man. Is, is there a good <laughs> population out there? Or? Yeah, it's, it's all right. It's not, it's not high. I put it like that. It's like a, it's not what people, it's not like a Houston or Cali type of thing. It's like, you know, way, way smaller than that. Like, we got, like, our own part, like, you know, in the city. It's like one part oh, really? in the city, yeah. So, it's, it's not, it's not, like heavy populated like Cali and Houston and all that. It's more just on some like, smaller city type shit. Okay. And you're from the south side of the city then? Yep. Okay. South side of St. Louis. So do you feel like the south side's different from the, the rest of the city or is it pretty much St. Louis, St. Louis? Uh, I ain't gonna lie. I feel, I feel like St. Louis is St. Louis, but like, like he said, you like 15 minutes from everywhere and that shit don't change for real. I mean, some sides look worse, but I feel like that shit grimy all together like that shit just bad all together like yeah yeah hey karma what what side of the city are you from man from the north side okay yeah so what goes down on the north side of st louis then it's it's like dangerous if you get mixed in with the wrong crowd because like we are close to each other like a lot going over there because like it's less police but it's like them certain police officers you know that you know, like the officers know, like all oh, this gang in that gang. Yeah, Northside was dumping off. Okay. Northside a good place to make some money. I feel that. So, how long have you two known each other? Considering you guys are from different sides of the city, then. Uh, Shit, what, like two years. Yeah, two like years. Two years. Now. Okay. Yeah, just off of like our friends knowing each other. Yeah. And then like, we linked up. We didn't even know we rap. Like I ain't, I ain't know he rap. He ain't know I rap. For real. And then we kind of was like, we we hoop a lot. So like when we was hooping and shit, we kind of like. Like damn, you rap. I mean, like yeah, like we, we just like yeah. any any rapper. Now I swear to God, I can bust that ass in my mouth. <laughs> any rapper. How yeah. much you putting on that car? Anything. Man, go ahead, put that rack up, man. I'll put go ahead, anything. put that rack up. Really. He really like that, Mingo. I really like that. I'm here. Shit. He ain't better than me, but shit. Nah, I was just playing. I ain't no hoop. I'll be just hoop. talking shit on the court for real. I'll be ass. <laughs> I'm hell ass at hooping. All right, so, you know, someone going to St. Louis for the first time, man. Where, where we need to go to eat, man? Where, where's some of the good spots to go to? You need to go uh, get some. A grill somewhere. Yeah, some Grand type of grill. grill. Miami grill. What, they got New York grill. Any type of honey Chicago. hot chicken wings. <laughs> yeah, go just find a grill. That's how you got to look up the grill. food and meat. And if you see a grill, go there and get honey hot wings. <laughs> they got cheese everything. Fry. Really? Gyros, burgers. Okay. Fish. Anything you want. Cake. I go to St. Louis, go to Chef Smooth, and my mama go there. Simple. No yeah. cap. We got so many entrepreneurs in St. Louis. It's like, you won't really even go to a store because like everybody got their own motion. Mm -hmm. Now, do they got some good Mexican food out there? Though? Man, like I said, they got like a one look, one look crowd. You know what I'm saying? One little ass crowd of like Mexican. It's literally a street. It's called Cherokee. It's okay. small. It's just a street, and they got all Mexican food on there. Like back-to-back -back stores, you know? But once you leave out of there, you ain't gonna find no Mexican store. Really? That's yeah. it, huh? That's just it, that's it. That's how you gonna get. Uh, now, if I'm looking to do some shopping, where I gotta go, man? You guys got some nice malls, some nice, you know, boutique uh, stores, or? I said Galley. Yeah, go to West right. County yeah. and the Galley. Yeah, that's probably the best two spots. Or like local spots, too, I feel like. like you try trying to spend some money, go to set. Like, we got a lot of entrepreneurs, like he said. So, like, people be having, like, um, brands and, like, just locally. And I feel like a lot of that shit be better than Boutiques some designer and shit. and shit like that, you know? Really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, so getting to the music. Let's start with your karma, man. So how'd you get into making music at first? Shit, getting tired of hearing shit I ain't like. 
<laughs> for real. <laughs> yeah, like, it was to a point to where I'm like, man, I ain't liking nothing that's getting dropped. And I just was like playing around with it and making shit like I want to listen to. And then I ended up just having fun with it, putting it on Instagram and chilling and people would press me for it. And it went like that. And but yeah, I ain't really seen nothing in it. And this was just last year you started rapping, right? Yeah. Yeah, I really was like, yeah, I'ma just start. Cause shit, it was moving like, I seen how, people was always telling me like, it's hard to really rap, but it ain't, I don't feel like it is, but as if you got a story to tell, I guess that's where I come in at. Yeah. So yeah. were your friends, were your family, were they surprised when you popped up? Like, hey man, check out my music? Or? Yeah, they, I was like, damn, you rapping? Like everybody <laughs> probably was like, thought it was a joke hmm. at first. Cause shit, I play, I play too much. Like I'd be joking about something. So they probably ain't see it getting this big and nothing, you know how I go. Yeah. So have you been surprised by, I, mean, I think you got what, over a million streams on Apple huh. alone, right? Yeah. So have you been surprised how quickly your shit took off there? Yeah, hella surprised, like, hella surprised. Just looking like, damn. Cause like, I be thinking like, damn, a million streams, but I think like, damn, that's a million people listening, you know? Very sick. And I need a million people in St. Louis. Yeah. What's some other cities that be showing you a lot of love on the music side then? Chicago, Kansas City, uh, a lot of city, like a lot of the Midwest for real. Okay. Yeah. That's why I feel like I'm gonna get the most buzz starting off is the Midwest area. Yeah. So did you lock in with the music like right when you started rapping, it's like really taking this shit serious or did it take a while for uh, you to lock in with it? When I realized I was going to spend, I realized I was spend like, cause studio yeah. session $50 an hour and then I was spending them there. I was going to the studio like four times a week. I'm like, damn, I'm putting hella money into this motherfucker. And I'm, I'm like, I might as well take it seriously if I'm going to be spending money going to the studio. Yeah. You know, putting, you know. Yeah, were you working like a regular job at that time? Yeah. I was uh, working a job to fix my car. For real? I swear to God, like, I ain't had no motion. Like, it was bad. It was bad. Like, I was getting paid like 10 an hour and work four hours. True. On my mom and like I got work two days and then I get paid, I go buy something to smoke and a part for the car and then I'll probably have enough to go to the studio. But shit like when I went to the studio I'll probably make like three or four songs. Like yeah, three or four songs in that hour. That's probably how I got my like work ethic so fast because I'm like, damn, I only got an hour, but I need this hour to yeah. make these songs type shit. So I'm like, all right. So that's why I work so fast, cause like yeah, had to I make the most out of your time. Man. Yeah, like, wasn't no that. playing around in the studio. That's it. Yeah. And what about you, Migo? How long you been rapping now? Shit, probably like, about like two years, two and a half years. Okay. Been rapping for a minute. But like, so, taking it serious, probably like, like for real, for real, like consistent, probably like a year, yeah. year and a half. So what inspired you to, you know, to start at it and to start taking it serious, too? Shit, a lot of people don't know this, but like, my, um, my uncle and my pops, they was like, you know, they Mexican, they, they was like the first people to start rapping that was like Mexican, you know what I'm saying? Really, like, they didn't really have a crowd back then because it was just starting to blow up with like social media and shit. So I was just like, I don't know, like I feel like if they could do it, shit I could do it, it gotta be in me, you know what I'm saying? That's how, and for real, for I ain't have shit going, that's why I started rapping, for real, like I was playing sports and shit, but I was like, I was ass, like I was playing football, I was ass, I ain't go to school a lot, like, my grades was hella bad. So I'm like, like I ain't doing shit. Like I gotta do something. So I was just like, I told my pops, I'm like, I'm finna start rapping. He like, all right, I'm finna take you to the studio. And that's how quick it happened. Like I just ain't. I had to find what I was good at. Find what I was good at. You know. Did you fall in love with it right away too? Like man, I fuck uh, with this or? Yeah, in the beginning I fell in love with it, and then it kind of was like, man, I don't know if I'm gonna do this. And then I picked it back up, and I kind of was like. I got confident that second time around. Okay. It kind of helped me, it boosted me, and I, yeah. I've been just going with it ever since, for real. I think that. So who'd you guys grow up listening to? Like, who's some of your favorite artists? Uh, see, uh, me, see, probably like, for real, for real, like, early on, probably like G Herbo. Okay. Bibby, uh, Dirk, Chief Keith, all of them. All, a lot of Chicago rappers, for real. That was like my main thing. What about you, Carl? Uh, I listen to Chief Keith hella bad. Uh, Chief Keith, Future, like 22G, like all of Brooklyn, New York, Jail, like I was in that shit bad. Uh, 
Yeah, just a lot of like different sounds, you know. I was around my dad a lot, so like a lot of Jeezy, Gucci, man. A lot of shit like that. Lil Wayne. Okay. Come on. Yeah. A lot of Lil Wayne. Man, he the GOAT, man. He yeah. is the GOAT, man. That man got so many different styles, started so many different trends. Yeah. And then you bring him up in the top right. shit, because like, he's like, he already did. They don't talk about him enough, for real. Yeah. Like, ooh, they be putting everybody else. And he's still else snapping today, right, too. Right, to, to this day. Yeah, <laughs> that's real, man. <laughs> All right, so what can you guys tell us about this album you both are featured on, this Worldwide Hustle album that's about to drop, man? This motherfucker crazy. Man. Explosive. Crazy. Like, everybody, I feel like everybody took their time and really put some of St. Louis, like, culture in it. So, like, it ain't no reason for people not to understand what's going on yeah. right, like, in our city. I feel like it's going to be one of the best mixtapes St. Louis ever heard. Like, probably one of, one of the top ones. If not the best, one of the top ones for sure. How big is this going to be for the city, man? To have so many different artists, you know, from all over the city too, come together for, for this project. Man, we, yeah, yeah, that's going to be big, you know. We ain't used to that shit. Like everybody mixing up, you know what I'm saying? So when it's like everybody mix up, it can show what we really could do for like the city, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, just everybody being on the same page, it kind of helped boost that mixtape ten times harder. Yeah. Hey, Karma, what song you got on there? Oh, uh, I got this one song on there. That motherfucker that. I ain't gonna fake it. I ain't gonna say too much about it, but it's that. It's produced by Sean Ferrari. Like, that should have said enough. For sure, yeah. Like, that's the new way. Hey, they scared to say it, but that's the new way. And we blessing it, like, bad. Like, where they can't even, they ain't even got no way not to see it. And then once it's in, it's gonna change the whole game, how we coming. It's just like a domino effect. Did you guys get in the studio with Ferrari for this too? Or huh, yeah, yeah, we was okay. there. He Ferrari, the goat, man. Ferrari cooked my shit up in person, right. like on the <laughs> piano, yeah. So what song you got on there, Migo? Shit, I don't even want to say the name right now. I'm just wait for, you know, have everybody wait for it. But yeah, that motherfucker like, I be snapping on shit for real. <laughs> like, no cap, like, you put something on that motherfucker, I'm snapping on that bitch regardless, you know what I'm saying? Especially, you got Sean putting that motherfucker on, so like, I had to snap on there, I can't bullshit on you know what I'm saying? Some shit like that. Mm -hmm. So, I had to snap yeah, on that so motherfucker. That's true. What's you guys' creative process? Do you guys write? You punch in, do a little bit shit. both or what? I write. Oh, I do both. Like, <laughs> it depends on how I'm feeling. Most stuff I like, I write, I started off writing, but it's like, the more you go in the studio, you just start feeling it and like just get the, like sometimes I don't get time to be able to write and sit down and write because like I'm moving and studio sessions pop up so I just go in there and feel it. The best ones be the ones that you don't write though and that you just feel. Okay. Like, shit, I was on some, I be shit, when I, when I go in the studio, I write regardless. I write days before and then hit the studio, lay all them down at once, like you know what I'm saying, like back to back to back. But there do be songs that like, I'll write it a certain way, it don't sound how I want it to sound. I'll just chop it off from there and then freestyle the rest. Okay. That's usually how my creative process works. So I usually write though. Like if I got the chance to write, I'm gonna write. I ain't finna freestyle none of that. I shit. got you. And uh, you got this new album called Johnnyville, man. Johnny Talk Bill, to us about man. the inspiration for Johnnyville. Man. That shit crazy for real. Like inspiration is just me just being me, you know what I'm saying, in St. Louis and you know, from my brother, you know what I'm saying, he passed away along with Johnny, you know what I'm saying? But that, that was really for him and, you know, everybody that around him know how, you know, them songs were for him, you know what I'm saying? Like his lifestyle, you know what I'm saying? How, how we were to get like, you know what I'm saying? How, how things just come along, so. But that mixtape, crazy though. Know? Go get yeah. that ASAP, because you're just gonna, you're gonna see the whole life story just spilt out on that whole album. How's the feedback been since you dropped it? Man, they love it. I put some like different type of shit because like everybody expect me to be like a strictly drill rapper, a trapper rapper. Like, nah, I rap about everything. You know what I'm saying? You just gotta listen to me. Everybody gotta give me a chance. You know what I'm saying? You listen to me. I got singing songs on there. I got like, I just got all type of shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a versatile dude. I stick to my lanes though. I make sure I stick to my lanes. But yeah. that spin went crazy. Yeah, you're right. That yeah, spin you did go on that crazy. Bitch, Hell yeah. <laughs> right on. Yeah, yeah that's the that shit. I love that shit, mom. <laughs> what, what video do you plan to drop next? I saw you just dropped that voice of the essays. Yeah, I just dropped that voice of the essays, uh, I think like two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Okay. 
something like that. But uh, I'm probably gonna be dropping um, something in uh, something in about a week. Just, just know oh, that really? shit gonna get serious. The shit okay. gonna get serious. Yeah, that's what's up, man. Hey, Karma, you dropped that uh, Heem story, man. Huh, yeah, Heem story. Yeah, so talk about the inspiration for that one, man. Uh, just to push it, like, St. Louis is a St. Louis lingo, Heem, meaning, like, better version of him, you know? Like, the best version. And I'm saying, like, I'm Heem, just like letting y'all know, like, past experience. I'm real big on, like, being straightforward and letting motherfuckers know, like, what's going on. Yeah. And yeah, I was dropping. And then I knew people was like always like it was big buzz around the city like, what does he mean? Mm-hmm. And like you know when you trying to push something new, you gonna have people who gonna be like they always gonna ask questions. So I was like, what better not to explain? It? Yeah, that's real. And you drop man, can I, correct me if I'm wrong, but seven projects this year? Huh? Yeah, and I'm I got about like three more. And, God damn. Yeah, I ain't gonna fake it. We blessing, <laughs> having fun like. Really, it's more just having fun, not holding my music, you know? Because I know, like, once I really get in the door, it's going to, like, my fans really going to appreciate, like, they going to see, like, the change. I try to keep, like, my supporters updated. Like, some tapes, I'm off like I was sick, going through stuff. You can hear it, and, like, the production-wise, how I'm rapping. Some people can't, but you can, like, tell them, you know how they go. Yeah. Was that a, a plan for you at the beginning of the year? Like, man, I'm gonna drop something damn near every month, or is that just kind of how it worked out? Uh, shit. It's just how it worked out. Like, I was just steady going to the studio, and like, how I was feeling for them past two months. So, like, you know, I was just like, I bet that's a. I came up with the title, and then I just dropped it. And like, it's like really like, I think of my album like a diary, for for, you know, just that. writing and then putting that shit out, and giving it to them. So what's some goals for you guys, you know, for your music career? Like, what are you trying to accomplish, whether it's short term or long term here? I'm just trying to be one of the vets in this shit, for real. Like, <laughs> I want to be known as that face in St. Louis. Like, I'm trying to be, like, where he at. Or I want him to help me get to where I need to be, you know what I'm saying? I just want to, I want to be known for my city. Everybody knows everybody else. I want to be known as Migo from St. Louis. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to be known anywhere else. I want everybody to know me as St. Louis. I want to be St. Louis, you know what I'm saying? I feel that. What about you, Carl? Uh, Some goals I got, short-term goals, just to get my sound, like, more around, like, the Midwest area. Like, I want, now that I know that I got, like, St. Louis listening, I want to get, like, states and cities around the city and have more push so when I start, like, getting to the opposite side, like, you know, it's gonna happen when, cause I gotta travel to get my sound. Just to get more exposure around them, short term goals, long term goals, it would be like another Michael Jackson, you know? For real. Like, one of the ones who can stand on stage and turn his head and then everybody faint. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah. You be seeing them videos, man? Um, that yeah, shit wild. Wow, right? Like, you know how powerful you is if you gonna stand on stage. You, you gonna faint in my presence. <laughs> yeah. You got bitches yeah. get stretched off. That's like the ultimate see. flex right there. You yeah, know? like, yeah, cause like, that was probably somebody's sister, somebody's baby mama. Right. You <laughs> <laughs> tell about somebody's baby mama, I'll be hella mad at my baby mama. You gotta leave her there, huh? Yeah, yeah you just got She be getting off of her, like, damn. Mm-mm. That shit wild, man. No All right, you guys got any shout outs you like to give before we wrap it up here? Oh, uh, yeah. Shout out my engineer, Ada Landlord. Shout out my beat maker, Dizzy Maker, Steph B, Zay Sam. Shout out to Team Press Play, Long Live North. Y'all know the fuck going on. Man, shout out Johnny, man. Long Live Johnny, man. Shout out the gang. You know, shout out my pops. Shout out Lalo. Shout out, you know, everybody who's rocking behind me, man. Shout out my mama, all everybody, man. Shout out everybody, for real. Let's go. She mad I don't talk hey. back I do drills dressed up in all hey, black I like Artie's with the turbo Brody death I caused that AR5 says 